In this episode of Avant Engineering Insight Notes, we're going to explore the importance of proper design of transmission gears for today's high-powered radio control helicopters. Many pilots think that the main reason to use helical gears on radio control helicopters is to make gears stronger. The fact of the matter is that the main purpose of helical gears is to reduce the helicopter gear train noise and increase the high rotation speed capability. Although the use of helical gears for this purpose is a good idea, the particular case for radio-controlled helicopters is a bit different and needs careful consideration. Current state-of-the-art combinations of motors and electronic speed controllers, or ESCs for short, are extremely powerful nowadays. A helicopter manufacturer can find itself facing customers that want to install power systems that can have short peaks passing 20 horsepower. Granted, that is not going to be continuous power, but those peaks are going to be present nonetheless, and they will, however, subject the gear train to that much stress. As you can imagine, those loads are extreme, and the consequences of such loads need to be looked at with careful consideration. Facing the possibility of these kinds of numbers, we at Avant realize that using off-the-shelf helical gear tooling or off-the-shelf helical angles would be an inadequate solution at best, and maybe even a dangerous proposition at worst. When you do an analysis of stress and survivability of the most commonly available and standard 15-degree helical gears, you quickly realize they will reach the limit of their resistance window very quickly for this application and will likely fail. We found that a better, although custom, solution was required. Ideally, you want to use the minimum helical angle possible that will make the gear train quiet. At the same time, this should not diminish the load carrying capacity and it should also minimize the inherent axial deformation under load that all helical gear based systems bring with them. When you look at how the noise and gear strength change versus the helical angle, you quickly realize that after about 4 degrees of helical angle, you already get most of the noise damping effect of the helical gear. Then as you increase the angle, you'll notice that for plastic gears, the load carrying capacity takes a hit after 10 degrees. This comes mostly from the deformation that the metal helical pinion's natural axial load creates on the plastic main gear. A helical gear pinion's tooth will try to slide or ride down the slope angle of the interfacing tooth of the main gear, creating a wedging effect on the other gear. This wedging makes the other gear become deformed axially under this load. During this engagement, the pinion tries to push the main gear up and away from the rotation plane. Another important point to consider is that this sliding creates a friction spot between the teeth that gets exacerbated as the helical angle increases. It generates heat buildup that, if not designed correctly, could literally build up heat to the point of melting the plastic. This can destroy the main gear and, as a likely consequence, also destroy the helicopter. That being said, there is a benefit that helical gears have for very high rotation speeds that is outside the scope of this engineering note, but needs to be taken into consideration for this application. At the end of the day, you do want to have some helical effect for its advantages in the very high RPM cases such as speed helicopter setups. At the same time, you need the minimum helical angle possible to minimize the axial deformation and just enough to get the required sound damping. This is a very tricky balance and a surprisingly difficult number to arrive to. It doesn't end here. There are additional considerations that need to be taken into account for designing an ideal gear train for a radio control helicopter application. So far, we have explored the effects of helical angle. Let's now explore the gear tooth geometry itself and what the particular RC helicopter application demands out of it. As explained before, friction is a very important factor to consider due to its heat generation. An additional undesirable effect is the wear that this friction creates between the teeth of the interfacing gears. This makes a careful tooth gear design that minimizes friction a must. There are many approaches to tooth design. We chose an approach that's based on the concept of an unspooling and spooling cord. If you add a cord that unspooled from one spool and then spooled in another, you get a very smooth transmission system with the cord drawing a straight line between the rotating spools. The only problem with this nice system is that once you run out of cord, you can't keep on transmitting forces. The solution is to make this effect infinite by creating a tooth profile whose traveling point of contact mimics the cord, so while engaged, the point of contact will travel in the same imaginary line where the spooling cord would be. 
This gives you the smooth ride of the system, and more importantly, it will completely eliminate the friction point between the teeth. Remember, no friction minimizes both the heat generation and the wear, two effects we need in our application. Interestingly enough, the resulting equation that describes this tooth profile will change the tooth profile for a given gear diameter. To engage in this manner, your gear tooth profiles need to be different for each diameter and to complicate things a bit more, their shape also has to be adjusted to take into account the inclination of the tooth from the helical angle. Some people wonder how we are able to use lightweight aluminum pinions driving plastic gears without the pinions wearing out after thousands of flights. These are some of the reasons. There are others that we will explore and there are some that we simply can't divulge. It turns out that it's not enough to have the right tooth profile because the plastic gear gets deformed under load. In other words, the contact point from the pinion's metal tooth sinks a little bit into the plastic driven gear's tooth and it sinks more at the tip of the tooth than at the root because of the leverage effect of the tooth height. In order to compensate for that, and to keep a correct no friction traveling contact point, we modified the tooth profile of the plastic side very slightly, adding material differentially so that under load, the tooth's point of contact is effectively riding the ideal imaginary cord's straight line. As an added bonus, that extra material being compressed works as potential energy storage that gets delivered back to the system at the time of the tooth disengaging. This affects the efficiency of the system tremendously, lowering the consumption of power, allowing for longer flights and delivering dreamy auto rotations as a consequence. Once you get to this point of the analysis, you realize that none of the standard tooling for the standard helical degrees will work because you can't use those standard helical degrees or the standard tooth profiles that were designed mostly for steel-to-steel -steel interface. The solution is to create your own tooling design and have a gear-cutting tooling company make it for you. We're aware it's a very expensive route, but when you're looking for perfection, that's what you have to pay. Additionally, we didn't want to be limited to only integer helical angles and gears. To allow for the possibility of decimal helical angles, we couldn't use the standard gear cutting equipment or the standard gear cutting software available to us. We custom ordered a software option for some of our 5-axis CNC machines so that we could cut gears synchronically at high speed and at non-standard angles. They took some time to come up with, but they finally delivered and we were able to test what we wanted. The CNC manufacturer benefited too, because now they have that capability as an option for their machines. The next question is, what about material selection? That's a very important part of the equation to know because it affects how much deformation compensation is required due to the fact that the deformation is determined by the compressibility of the material being pinched under load. One of the important properties that the material needs is dimensional stability under different humidity conditions. Most plastics breathe water vapor and change dimensionally with moisture absorption. The polymer we chose has one of the lowest coefficients of absorption available. Additionally, it contains additives that make it self-lubricating and very slippery. This is another one of the reasons why they don't wear out our aluminum pinions. The other factors are tensile strength and toughness. Tensile strength determines whether a tooth will break just from the forces applied to it, and toughness determines if the tooth will fail from the constant impact of tooth engaging and disengaging at high speed. Polymers that comply with the requirements needed on those parameters are extremely expensive and available from very few high-end polymer manufacturers. But thankfully, the amount used in a gear is not large enough to affect the cost too much. This keeps the replacement cost of our gears at the same price range as other less sophisticated gears. Selection of materials like this are the solution to high strength requirements. There are other ways to make a gear system with a somewhat reasonable but still short lifespan by adding fiberglass or carbon fiber to the plastic. This brute force approach helps, but only for a limited time because the fiberglass or carbon fiber act as virtual sandpaper, wearing out the pinion gears. Even resorting to using a heavier hardened steel pinion would just delay the wear a bit longer. Another somewhat extreme and heavier solution would be to use main gears made out of steel. The problem with this approach 
is that now both the pinion and main gears are heavier than needed, and lubrication of some kind is now required to delay the wear from the metal-to-metal -metal contact. None of these extremes are really necessary with the 21st century materials available. A correctly designed drivetrain using today's advanced and sophisticated polymers can withstand 14-cell high-power systems out of the box without resorting to heavy steel or abrasive fibers. Another brute force approach to deal with the high stresses is to reduce the relative force being applied to the teeth by increasing the diameter of the gear to a very large size. This will reduce the force per tooth by extending the distance and leverage between the contact point and the shaft. For instance, if you double the radius of a circle, you cut the pressure of the teeth by half, but this is at the expense of it becoming a very bulky and unattractive system. To accommodate for those large diameters, the canopy would have to be modified with large openings to let the oversized gears extend far away from the frames, exposing them to airflow, creating unnecessary drag and an unattractive appearance. If hiding the gears inside the canopy is still required, the canopy would need to be widened to fit the large gears. At the point that the front cross-section of the helicopter is no longer aerodynamically efficient, with the resulting increase in drag, would render it unacceptable. A well-designed system will not need to be penalized by large gear diameters. The gear train can be kept inside a nicely shaped and very aerodynamic and elegant canopy, and still be able to withstand the abuse of today's high-power systems. Another manufacturing consideration to understand is why it needs to be CNC machined. Having explored the needs for the current power levels, the precision required to stay within the design parameters immediately discards molding as a manufacturing option. The nature of the molding process has a consequent shrinking factor that's impossible to avoid. This shrinking is also not perfectly constant, so a shrinkage compensation factor can't always make the gears stay within the required parameters. Unfortunately, a herringbone type gear that would solve the axial loads problem can't be practically made via CNC machining and needs to be molded. Doing so, however, would make it lose the precision due to the shrink factor, making it easier to strip. The second undesirable need when using injection molding is the resin viscosity. Unfortunately, good flowing materials for molding need a low melted viscosity coefficient to flow correctly while being molded. The kind of high tensile strength polymers needed have the disadvantage of a high viscosity coefficient when melted. This high viscosity is one of the reasons why they are so good as gear materials, but it's also a reason why they are bad for injection molding. Taking into consideration all the points previously discussed and after math, testing, and prototyping, we reach the ideal of 9.72 degrees of helical angle with a modified tooth profile that had a slightly different material buildup towards the end of the plastic-driven gear and a different shaped tooth for the driving pinion, whose contact spot during engagement under torque would match the imaginary straight traveling contact line of the spooling cord. This angle happens to be the result needed for this particular combination of pinion and main gear for the 700 series of Mostro helicopters. For a different combination, it would result in a slightly different angle and the whole process would need to be repeated. We hope you enjoy this series of engineering notes. There are literally hundreds of design considerations in our products similar to the ones detailed here, and we plan to make some of them available in this video series. We can't really give out all of the information because a lot of it is proprietary, but we will try our best to help you understand what makes Mastro's such incredible pieces of engineering. Goodbye for now, and until the next Engineering Insight note, have some awesome flying and never forget that it's all about fun.